Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. We're going to talk about a new book. It's called Panic Free, the 10-day program to end panic, anxiety, and claustrophobia. Uh, our, uh, our guest has actually uh, written another book of uh, uh, a breakthrough treatment for fear of flying uh, because he spent at least a couple of years as a captain um, on a couple of... Um, uh, passenger ships, uh, airlines. Uh, Captain Tom Bunn, he is uh, has an MSW and is a licensed social worker as well. He's a leading authority on panic disorder and the founder of SOAR, which provides treatment for in-flight panic sufferers and the author of SOAR, the breakthrough treatment for fear of flying. Tom, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to us today. Hey, Mark. Really glad to be able to help get the word out. Yeah, you see, one of the things is people... Some people are afraid the plane isn't safe, but uh, what happens for more people is they're afraid of crashing emotionally. They're afraid of having a, having a panic attack on the plane. So we had to find a way to fix that and um, tried all kinds of things, and nothing was working, all, all the existing therapies. So finally stumbled on something that did. Now we fixed flying on the plane. So then the book I just released a couple of weeks ago is focused on using the same method for just day-to-day living on the ground, which is a much easier place to deal with. Uh, and maybe safer things. to some people. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> How long were you flying? Uh, well, I flew first with the Air Force seven years and then 31 years with uh, Pan Am and then United. Wow. Did, were you always fascinated with flying? Yeah, from the time I was a little kid. It was just an amazing thing uh, growing up uh, that after World War II, all the guys who came back who were the heroes, they were the pilots. So, uh, and, and it, it was just such a big deal when I was a little kid. Uh, yeah, I was fascinated by it's it. Still, it's still a big deal. You know, I, I, even though planes, I was just on a plane uh, a week and a half ago, something like that, and I, um, I was thinking the way planes are packed with people, it's more like a bus than air travel used to be, but that's another story. As a captain, have you had people, while you're flying, have panic attacks? Well, I'm sure, but the thing is, when you're in, in, up in the cockpit, you can't go back and take care of them. I, I'm sure, for example, there's been times when I would be in the cockpit completely bored, and somebody in the back of the plane thinks that their life is in danger and imagines that uh, something awful is about to happen, and since they can't escape to get rid of the panic attack, they get stuck with it. Did you, uh, you, you have advanced training, advanced degrees, uh, Toro University, I believe, is at least one of your degrees. Did you go back to school after you retired from flying, or were you... I was, I was still, I was still in, in flying when I was going through grad school, uh, so I was doing both at the same time. Um, You know, what happened was that when you start working on fear of flying, most pilots think that if people just know how safe it is, they'll be fine. But there's a lot more to it. There's there's all the psychological element. Why do people have to be in control to feel safe? Why do people have to have escape to feel safe? Now, some people are okay when they're not in control. They trust. But a lot of us, for one reason or another, are not able to trust other people or able to trust the situation if we don't have a backup of escape. So that was the key, that, that I had to find a solution to that. And, and all the existing therapies, tried them all, didn't work. Tried to go into graduate school to see if I could find something there. It was good to get the training, but nevertheless, it, it, the answers were not available. How did you get involved and interested in panic attacks itself? Well, because the course that, uh, the first fear of flying course I was working on was the one that Pan Am sponsored. And we taught people that flying was safe. We taught them uh, to use breathing exercises, put them on a plane at the end of the course. And the, the, the really awful thing was they were on the plane doing the strength, doing these exercises that we trained them to do, doing the breathing exercises, in a total state of panic. It just wasn't working and feeling so helpless to 
watch people in a state of panic and not be able to do anything. That's what set me on this quest to find a solution. You um, you gave me your age the other day. I don't necessarily have to uh, announce that. However, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm 83. 83. That uh, did you retire at what age? From flying. Uh, when I when I retired, it was age 60. It's moved up to 65 now. Wow. Wow. So you've been retired for 23 years from flying. Do you miss yeah, it? Yeah. So so this has given me a chance to really focus on on really sophisticated ways to fix the panic. And to so, help people. It, it, yeah, you know, the thing is that when you're in a state of panic, you really can't do anything. Your, your brain is fried. And, and so that's why the methods that had been taught to people to use just weren't going to work, at least in the airplane. Uh, and in most cases on the ground as well. People are kind of like the deer in the headlights and can't do anything. But um, what what I found was we have to deal with it the kind of way that first responders have to deal with uh, high-stress things. You know, when a policeman or a fireman is in a life-threatening situation, their brain is not exactly working at, uh, at, 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 as well as if they were cool, calm, and collected. Sure. So what they do is they have to have training, hands-on training, do it again and again and again. Here's the procedure for this situation. Here's the procedure for that situation. So they go on autopilot. And what we had to do was to take a person who's going to say, well, okay, I need to be on a plane, I need to go through a tunnel, I need to do an MRI. We we break that experience down into as many little parts as we can and link each part to two different ways to calm. One is to keep from getting the stress hormones that releases that uh, cause you to get revved up, and the other is to activate the calming system that calms you down. And what? And we want it to work. And we want it to work automatically, totally automatically, when you're in the situation. We should take a look at what panic actually is from a psychological standpoint. Can you give us a description of that? Well, yeah, it's a situation where you believe that you're in great danger, and it, that's the first part. But the the second part is that you're trapped. That there's nothing you can do to get out of it, and that's. That's really the essence of panic is is where you are in danger and, and it's impossible to act. And what sometimes people do literally is they freeze. It's, it's I, I the, mean, for example, a, a person can usually get rid of panic if they can run. But if you're in a department store and, and you came in the entrance and you have a panic attack, if that entrance isn't right in your face, your brain isn't going to work well enough for you to say, oh, I know where the exit is, I'm getting out of here. It's got to be right there. The brain is just totally fried in panic, and you, you, you're you immobile, you're frozen, and that's why it's so difficult. You know, people say, well, don't worry about panic, it isn't going to kill you, but when you're in a state of panic, you, you almost wish you were dead. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I'm thinking of, of, you know, adrenal response, you know, the flight, fight or flight Syndrome. This is related to that, isn't it? Well, yeah, because what happens is that you get a lot of stress hormones building up, building up, building up, and your heart rate goes up. You get really hyper aroused. And then the second thing is you have a bounce back from that, and you go into a state of, of hypo arousal. Your heart rate goes way down. Your breathing rate goes down to the level it that, well, basically what's happening is we've got a response that, um, you, you know, where some creatures play dead. You know, we have that possibility, too. And when we get super revved up, and that doesn't work, when we go into fight or flight, we can't, we can't fight our way out of it, we can't run our way out of it, and we feel trapped, then we go into playing dead. And it's not something we do intentionally, it just comes over the person. And they they freeze and they can't do anything. It's a part of the brain that that is not connected to to thought. Yeah, that's exactly right. Right. Yeah, it's not a choice. It's not a choice. Sometimes, for example, uh, women who are sexually assaulted, uh, judges might ask, "Well, why didn't you fight the guy? Why didn't you try to run away?" Because what happens when you believe that you can't get away? You totally freeze and cannot do anything, and that is not a choice. That simply comes over the person. They have no 
no will that will keep them from going into that state, other than perhaps if they had had some martial arts training that would kick in automatically. I was thinking of muscle memory and and golf, because as yeah. a pi- pilots always play golf when they're off. Uh, except yeah, for you, you went to school. Example. Yeah, right? because you, it's too complicated. You know, hitting the golf ball is too complicated to do it consciously. You've got to build it in your muscle memory, and that's where we need to build in the panic protection. Does everybody have a panic button? Uh, you know, I think there are some people who, when they go into hyperarousal, they don't have that bounce back to to the to the immobilized state of being frozen. Some people don't go into it. Some people do. Why that's true, I don't know. I think that one of the things that I I I don't recall ever having a a panic attack. But at the same time, I can imagine, you know, first responders going into a shooting uh, of some kind. And even with that training, the brain takes over and says, freeze. Uh, Well, I I can only tell you what I believe would be the case if you've had training which will trick... the part, okay, the part of the brain that we're trying to train is called unconscious procedural memory. Uh, that's where you learn how to play golf really well. That's how you learn how to do a tennis serve. That's how you learn how to drive a car. You know, you can have a conversation while you're driving your car because you're on mental autopilot. That's in the subcortex. Now, the cortex is where our thinking is, and that part is vulnerable to stress hormones. A lot of stress hormones we don't think well, but the subcortex isn't vulnerable, and that's why if we train the subcortex unconscious procedural memory well enough, whether you are trying to deal with panic or whether you're a first responder, it should hold up. Uh, our guest is Tom Bunn. He's written a, a book, A Holistic Approach to uh, Panic Attacks. And I've, I've, we've talked to people about panic uh, uh, on late night help in the past. Panic Free is the name of the book, the 10 day program to end panic, anxiety, and even claustrophobia. Um, I may have a touch of that. You can't get me into a um, an MRI. Clo- I hate those yeah. things, right? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, there you go. But uh, uh, when we're going to take some time out in a moment or two, and what I'll ask you to do is give us one or two tips during our next segment. We will have time to do that now, and we'll talk about what people can start to do to find out how to get rid of that panic. Uh, I'm I'm also interested in can panic attacks affect somebody physically? Is there a physical reaction to to panic attacks? Heart attack maybe, uh, stop breathing, can you I th- Yeah, I think I think the, the the really serious question about physical stuff is that once you've had a panic attack, once you're subject to panic attacks, then you're always afraid that you're going to have one. And that hyper um, uh, 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 tension, that hypertension, is a major health problem. They say that uh, it, it, most of the times when people have strokes, it's because of hypertension. Right. So, We're going to have to it, take that time out. Yeah. We'll come back and continue the conversation. Uh, I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. Join us at LateNightHealth.com. Tom Bunn and I return along with Daryl in just a couple moments. The latest from the greatest, the best in new music by classic rockers, with your host, the insane Daryl Wayne. This is Alice Cooper, and if Daryl Wayne is insane, what does that make me criminally insane? Stick around to find out. Many of the artist interviews for the latest from the greatest have been captured on audiobook. There is a volume one and volume two. Great information and conversations with people in the industry and people surrounded by the industry and of course the rock stars themselves i'm the reverend al green and you're listening to the insane daryl wayne and i said wayne insane 
You can find it on Amazon or Blackstone Audio. Search for the latest from the greatest from Daryl Wayne, D-A-R-R-E-L-L-W-A-Y-N-E. Hello, this is Weird Al Yankovic, and you're listening to the insane Daryl Wayne, aren't you? <laughs> There's a lot of talk all over the internet about the remarkable benefits of carbon-60, and baby boomers are especially excited about it. Greska's carbon-60 is the premium carbon-60, developed by an aerospace and NASA scientist. 95% of Greska's customers report positive results from this Nobel Prize-winning technology in just four days. Imagine more energy, better health, and more vitality. It's very bioavailable to quickly mend toxin cripple cells. This is a super powerful antioxidant. Bob Greska is so confident that you'll love his carbon-60, he wants to send you a bottle at 50% off the regular price to see how life-changing this will be for you. Call 720-600-6040. That's 720-600-6040. Visit c-60.com to learn more. Call 720-600-6040 now or visit c-60.com.